what is now the problem? Because certainly we thought these two weeks training can as well give basic skills to this person and it's ready to work in the Middle East. I, I, me, personally, I have a question with the curriculum of these maids. The whole process of training is perfect. I mean, it's a good idea. We provoked and it started. We know where we are coming from. It, there was no train before. Oh, before, before, if Mr. Karima can remember, during, no, during the days of the Middle East, those are the days, mm. these training curriculum, uh, the, the, the current, yes, those the Iraq days. days. Maybe, maybe the Iraq days. No, mm. maybe I can clarify. Mm. Tra training was mandatory, mm. but there were, there were no guidelines. There were no, that, that's no, what no, I mean. The days, there were there no, was no uh -huh. curriculum. True. So, we People would do train actually, on no themselves. Training. You it used to see. It was required. To train. I think of the <laughs> yes. right. Okay. The company directors mm. were doing it their way yes. to make sure they they they, they orient. Mm. But now, <laughs> they improved it by a curriculum, mm. which came in and uh, to me, mm. I find the curriculum being so bulky, mm. and uh, non targeting the real life experience. Mm. Uh, that is where the problem comes in. It wasn't addressing the real life experience. It is not addressing mm. what is exactly on ground, and what this is exactly the, these maids are going to yes. Uh, mm. Before they used to orient, mm. giving the 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 knowledge, the simple knowledge, the tips. Mm. But when they brought the curriculum, mm. it became bulky, and more uh, needed more time. Mm. Which time, uh, some of the companies may be complaining, mm. but to we. Uh, who advocate for the workers' rights. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have a problem with the time, yes. but the issue of the curriculum. The yes. curriculum is a bit complex according to what they are teaching. These are non-informal, these are informal people mm -hmm. who, who don't even know how to write. Some of them some don't know how to read. But why would you really take somebody who can't write? Uh, but and still, they... when you ask uh, Mr. Karema, mm -hmm. for them, these are business people. Someone comes in, uh, when she's in her normal senses, she can reason, she's mature, she's the age that you can deploy. Mm. She, has, she has some common sense, but she doesn't know English. She cannot write. Mm. Will you deny that person a chance to go? She has proved she can clean, she can go even by uh, guesswork and does she work. So, no, these are the people that have ended up on board. Have ended up like and many of them, these are the people the politicians are carrying to these companies. These are the people who are in villages and on streets here calling for employment, who eventually can turn into a burden to government. And it's what these people are doing. So government should come down and get to understand the localness of the people they are trying to talk about. Mm. It's not about setting things because you are an elite or you have gone to whatever. The class of the people they are planning for does not suit what they are. What they are bringing. Yes. I want to so this is thing. where the, the curriculum is failing. Yes. They have gone ahead to train awkward things that actually are exposing our own into uh, um, uh, overwork or kind of torture. Mm. They teach in the curriculum. You have somewhere where they teach uh, car washing. Mm. Our own have turned into canare. You hear them climbing mm. ladders and falling down. Many cases of received dead bodies mm. about the same thing. Girls are being forced to do almost manual work for men because the curriculum teaches them that. They tell them to obey things that are beyond what a domestic work should do, should do. including mm. petty, whatever, uh, I call it feeding these dogs and whatever pets. Mm. Something I think should be clarified. You may mm. tell me, yes, Arabs have cats, mm. they have what? You've had uh, a dispute in Kenya of a girl who was breastfeeding yes. dogs. Mm. I don't have proof about that, but when it I look at the Ugandan curriculum, which teaches people how to care about these dogs and whatever, then I, I don't doubt. But, but you certainly, you are going to somebody's country and you have to abide by their practices and cultural values. Anyway, I'll come so back to What do we negotiate? Those who go, who take, yeah, yeah, those who those send them, them specifically, yes. what do they negotiate that our own have to do in these houses? And what they shouldn't do. Yes. I'll come back to you on that same point. Vivian, mm. if government hadn't any point, 
by trying to bring out such a plan. And do you think this plan will address the excesses that are now experienced in the Middle East? Talking about the stranded girls, the stranded people who were there and were brought back. Um, Mubarak, I managed to catch that statement of um, the yeah, Honorable Minister mm. Sarah Imola, and I think that in the sense that he's talking about the nature of unskilled workers, mm. I think it's going to be hard to implement. If you're talking about skilled workers, then it will work. But I also know that we already have that part of skilled people who um, are able to get jobs in those countries, and even the Western countries that want to employ skilled people from here. We already have an established system for that. Mm -hmm. I think what government should have done is to look at the plight of the girls who go there and cannot read, they cannot write, they don't have the skills, but they are looking for jobs. Now, when you look at um, the ban that was put in place by the UAE, mm -hmm. two things come out. First of all, at the end of September, we saw uh, the UAE communicate to an uh, embassy in Abdali, and they told them that for a Ugandan to come in to work, then they were supposed to have about 5.3 million Ugandan shillings mm -hmm. on their account. As security. As security. Mm -hmm. And not only Uganda, there were also other African countries like Nigeria. And then, as if that was not enough, then we got the ban on the visiting visa. That was as of 18th of October. So you get a ban on the visiting visa, because the visiting visa is 30 days, let's take the, the record straight. So you have that uh, visiting visa that is 30 days. And which, you, which the embassy, which the ministry in Uganda is saying they haven't received that communication. <laughs> that was quite interesting because mm -hmm. it is everywhere and um, the, the, the embassy was communicated to. Mm -hmm. And again, what is interesting is that it's not only Uganda that has been affected. There are 20 other African countries. You have Togo, you have Burundi, Rwanda here has mm -hmm. been affected as well by that ban. And uh, the visiting person, because what was happening before that was that you just do your paperwork, then uh, by maybe an agent, mm -hmm. then you get into Dubai, and as you arrive there, you're able to get your visa. You don't even have to go through the hassle of what happened with other countries. Because with other countries, you wait to get the visa, then get those air tickets, and then get arranged to actually leave and go there. So I think that was quite unique. It was easier to get into uh, Dubai on those visiting visas. Now, that is where the loophole was. You, you, you see a government which, according to labor companies, has not done enough, even just in a mere addressing the excesses and the gaps in the bilateral agreements and the MOUs they signed in regard to labor externalization. But it is demanding so much from these companies. And so, you, you want a company to really look at people with the certificates. Vivian, is this realistic? Is the government not trying to milk a cow? It doesn't really feel That's mm -hmm. where I'm getting to. Mm -hmm. Because, look, what some of these companies have been doing, and, and you know, Kasita has voiced those, um, uh, has voiced those companies, whereby uh, these visit visas were being abused. In that sense, you have a recruitment agency because some of these girls have come out with those stories. I was recruited to go there and work. But then the girl doesn't know, because remember we, talked, we are talking about a girl who can't even write or cannot read. So she is recruited by this agency that gives her a visit visa, which is 30 days. And told when you get there, you'll find a job. Mm. And that is where the problem is. That's what so the government is. needs to help this person mm -hmm. between this person who is being linked to a job and the labor exporting company, which wants to meet that money for playing the middleman role. And I think when you're saying that you're only going to be exporting skilled workers, I think that is significantly interesting. Well, I will get back to Abdullah, but if I do actually come back to you, let me just bring in uh, Shaba. Why would you really recruit a person who can't read, who can't write, and how do you expect this person to avoid all the problems and the challenges we are seeing on camera every day that we are crying in the Middle East? Okay. Uh, now, I don't know how uh, some, uh, some people understand this, but let me put it straight forward and make some clarifications. One, if you want an unskilled person, Mm? 
you expect to get every person who comes your way. Because you are not taking a professional. This is an skilled person. So if you're lucky to get someone who has reached senior four, a six graduate, then it will be a good deal. Mm. And the reason but most of these maids have not gone to senior four. I'm, I'm talking I'm, about I'm that. Coming, I'm coming mm. to that eh, because we have taken even graduates as maids. Yes, which is okay. Yes, which yes. Is okay. Mm. But now, the reason why we have uh, remember these are domestic workers. Mm. They are not cashiers. They are not. Uh, they are literally machines. Yeah. So they are domestic workers who are going to work. Maybe you, 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 you so the reason why we have this training with the curriculum mm -hmm. is to aid them to adapt to the environment they are going to look for. Because this is a new environment, new food, new language, new everything is new to them. Mm -hmm. So that's why we train them. So that when they leave, mm -hmm. they are not see, they're seeing something new. Secondly, not everyone who has never gone to school cannot work. There are so many who have demonstrated that they can work and look after their families back home. Under the circumstances. Under the circumstances. Mm -hmm. So the, the question would be that now, what are the challenges to address the challenges involved known to be specific? Because there are no records that are saying that people who have got some little education, they are better off at their workplaces. Mm -hmm. So when a challenge strikes, eh, it has affected everyone, even graduates who have, who have taken. Mm -hmm. You get it. So it depends on the nature of the person who is going to employ this person, their character. Because I've always asked people to be at least uh, uh, to be real, to mm -hmm. live in, in, in a real world. That now we all have maids at our homes. We also have challenges. We also have challenges mm -hmm. with them. Maids who are educated, who speak the same language, who speak the same language mm -hmm. with us. So now. Since we, these, these are domestic workers, and there's no way you can deal with the challenge, they always happen. That's why we train them. We even give, give them basic skills that, yes, let's say you're in a house and the man wants to rape you. Eh? What do you do? Mm. These are the trainings we give them. Protection. Protection. Mm. Call police, call the office. Eh? Now, I want to interject there. Eh? No, no, no. Raise an alarm. Have you heard him say, call police, yes. call but office? But call the office. language. I want to interject. Yes. From, because, mm. because that's where the problem now, begins. Let me finish up. Mm. Because under the guidelines we have and the laws we have here, every foreign recruitment company in Saudi Arabia mm. must have a Ugandan as a coordinator. Which means that if this girl calls the office, she will be speaking with a person who speaks the same language. You get it. It's not like that those foreign offices, I mean foreign companies, that they are, uh, they are occupied by Arabs. We have a coordinator, a coordinator. Where? in the police stations. No. And that is problem in the number two. Companies, in the utility no. companies, in a the fire companies. A, for, a foreign recruitment company mm. we deal with has a Ugandan who acts as a coordinator yes. with these girls. So paid the girls by. are supposed not to call police. Mm. No. Coordinators no. Paid, by, paid by who? Paid by the foreign recruitment company, but they are supposed to coordinate because these girls we understand that most of them will not speak good English. Mm. Some of them cannot express themselves. We teach them basic Arabic, mm -hmm. which may not be enough for her to report herself. Mm. So they are given these numbers. They are taken to office. So they have contacts of our office coordinators mm. in Saudi Arabia who speak the same language. So they can easily report challenges. So and in, in other words, in other words, have, the, the challenges that minister is talking about mm -hmm. or the plans to stop you know uh, exporting these unskilled labor mm -hmm. you, you you literally <coughs> saying that there is no connection between the, the the lack of skills and the challenges that they face in those countries no first of all the, the, the challenges will exist mm -hmm. but how deal with them eh, will be the question mm -hmm. and it should be uh, it should be addressed by all of us Mm. who are players in this sector, mm. government, recruitment companies, mm. uh, activists, you get it? Eh? Mm. So now, if this, if let's say activists have seen a gap mm. eh, in, uh, in the process, in the process mm. they should be able to help. They should be able to bring it out so that we engage all stakeholders and then we see how we deal with Shabana, it. Shabana, I will come back to you. Abdallah, mm. you, you were saying a connection. Is there a connection? 
yeah. between lack of skill, mm. between language issues, you know, problems that are associated with our guns and the challenges they face, or these are prevailing circumstances and challenges that are not necessarily being brought by the lack of skilled labor that we take to Middle East. You know, ministry tends to, to miss a point. Mm. They have a very good document, or a flowered document. Mm. Very good. And when you read it very fast on top, like how Mr. Karima is trying to narrate it, <laughs> yes. it sounds very good. Mm. But what entails the document, or when you go, uh, yeah, uh, when to go practical, mm. it really uh, it is full of a compromise mm. that they do not want to really to talk about. Talk about. Now, Mr. Karima has, has told you that for them they do their work. Indeed, I want to thank this company. First of all, being a trafficker and accepting to go legal, you go submit yourself mm. to the ministry, get a license. Some of these company people were traffickers, perpetual. Actually, they know business than the, the minister. They are the ones who read business for the minister. They know. They have been in the Middle East. Mm. They were perpetual traffickers. But by the time a thief comes to you and say, you know what? I'm sure Mr. Kalima is not part of it. And no, I'm saying, I want, to be, I want to come to you, you regulate me. You have to respect that thief. So I want government to respect these people. And at the same time, I want the company people to respect themselves and try to avoid a compromise. They are the ones... What compromise? I'm coming to narrate, to explain that. Mm. You cannot be a fox and then be responsible uh, to be in charge of a meat store. Mm. You've heard minister often time coming out and say, every company must have a monitoring desk. You ask, these are companies that are doing business. They earn a profit from these people. You understand? Mm. At the same time, you are telling these people to monitor the people they have already earned the profit. How will they protect their profit mm. and the rights of the workers? <clears throat> Secondly, you, you also go ahead to give them monopoly in the training. I cannot be a pancake seller. I mix that pancake of yesterday and today. Then I tell the buyer that please uh, pick slowly. There is one for yesterday and for today. Mm. Will I be making sense? Of course, I've got to keep quiet. These people know they bad, they whatever. Actually, they know many things in secret. They know. That's why they can tell you they can know now a girl who is making drama. They know. But some things they cannot disclose in their capacity simply because this customer will not go, is will, problem, will be scared. Is the problem I'm coming to, the to, lack of scale? I'm coming to, to that. The problem is in the process. The problem, is the, problem? the problem is in the process. It is not in the skills. Actually, the ministry is missing the point when they go over zealously and they want to assert that it is skills. No. For us, we have identified it, that actually the girls are disoriented. Oh, even when they have issues, they are not... Being disoriented? What I've just explained, he who deploys them does not tell them exactly what is... What they are going to do. Or what is taking place. Oh. Then, <laughs> uh, uh, let me <laughs> finish, let me finish. Yes. This is where you kill it all. Yes, like, let me finish my point. If you let this company have a monopoly in a training mm -hmm. to in, in monitoring, yes. and again, you send a coordinator who is paid by an Arab. An Arab is the boss of Karema and is the boss of the coordinator. Yes. At, the, at the end, this Arab man, uh, this girl, this Ugandan girl who is paid by an Arab, is going to be at the mass of his Arab boss at the office. And the, and the recruitment company. Then another point mm. is about the mindset. The girl, the girl is told, the girl, the girl is told to to always report. Mm. I mean, these girls leave this place assured mm. that whatever happens, because for us we have realized there are minor issues mm. that do not need you to call the police. Yes. These are labor disputes yes. that do not all the time need you to call a mama fina or even call for a ticket. Mm. But these girls have been tamed by their deployers. 
don't worry you go everything is okay whatever you happens know. when you feel like you want to change please just call office call police mm -hmm. the answers are recorded here they go with a fixed mindset but in our opinion as migrant workers mm -hmm. voice we believe a growth mindset should be more emphasized even in the training centers mm -hmm. for someone to adapt in an environment that she's not sure of. Are you not asking so much from these recruitment companies? Because how do you expect and who should foot the bills? Of what? Of a growth mindset? Yes, of the training, actually, of these guards. Oh, I, no, it's very simple. Within their structures, let them look at what we are proposing and see how they can amalgamate it. On whose cost? Because I think no, you know, you mean when you take mind. away mm. the, the topic of car wash and you put a mindset, does that carry any cost it is very simple can can someone Just hear my explanation it is very simple mm. why 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 girls come to us in a minute complaining and we handle their issues what do you think which technique do we use and you don't want to listen we tell you we have got the medicine and you want to dodge us because you exclude the workers or even the workers opinions are not considered anywhere mm. and secondly the likes of, uh, I mean, my brother, Mr. Karema, they have done their part, but they continue wanting to e even infringe or go into workers' affairs, even when they are not workers. Mm -hmm. The likes of the Mr. Karemas, these are people who are doing labor export, and they are regarded as job blockers. So a job blocker category is a businessman who cannot speak for a worker. If I'm to ask Mr. Karema, who represents the workers' opinions, apart from we, the activists, who come out and say they must, they must. They are having Does the power. ministry even know mm. what they call a tripartite structure, which the international labor standards uh, say or recommend? Mm. Did they follow it? Or they just sit down, they, when they sleep and wake up, they only see you wear a, and the ministry, in other words, you're which you whether does not represent in workers' other, in other opinions. You're saying that the, mm. government, the government is missing the point. And actually, yes. if I bring in Vivian again, I want uh, Mr. Shaban to react on what you just said because it seems like. I, and I don't want him to go in defense <laughs> because I'm trying to exonerate him. No, you, you're not. I hope he gets let, smart let, there. Let him, let him actually react to that. Okay. Mm. Have to why, why, why is it <laughs> of course, I know them. He, he wants to, to, to guide this debate, mm. but now, one, one thing. First of all, my brother is best informed about the Irish one. Two, mm. uh, uh, labor recruitment companies do not train. Mm -hmm. Training centers are independent entities. Owned by labor recruitment directors? Yeah, owned by, okay, a labor company can have a training Hello. center. Hello. Have but you got he, the point? No. <laughs> because who trains these people? Okay. Who trains these people? Mm -hmm. Even trainers are also accredited. I, you don't pick someone from the street to come no, and I train. Mean, who, who, so now, who, who foots the bill? Mm -hmm. That's one of training. Of training. Of training of these workers. And who is in charge of that training? Okay. First of all, training centers are independent entities, even if they are owned by directors of recruitment companies. So they are, the directors are owning this Listen, companies. Listen, mm. listen very well, because even the process of accrediting these training centers, mm. we are nowhere to be seen as train, as recruitment companies. Mm. They have specifics that are supposed to be provided to the ministry for them to get licenses. So it means that even the curriculum mm. was, uh, was generated by the ministry and, and given to the directors. Given to, to, to the, the training is, centers. Which are owned by the directors. Not all training centers are owned by directors. That but some of them be. are Some owned. of them are owned by business people who are also benefiting from this industry. Mm. You get it through training, through providing skills. Secondly, uh, he has talked about the laws. At, at, at whose cost? At whose cost? The cost is uh, the, the whole process of externalizing a, a, a female migrant worker is made by the employer. Mm. That's why we told them. But you make them pay. Tell you what. No, they don't pay training. No, no, the, I mean, the, as he process, says, the, the, the employer sends yeah. money, exactly. which which they so use to in the training, are about a hundred dollars. Yes, completely from the from the, the because I've had girls saying that 
I have I was asked to pay for the ticket. No. I've asked to my brother, my mm -hmm. brother, I think you mix up things, eh? Because we have had agents here who mm -hmm. are doing the same thing. They do take girls. So when a girl who is less informed about the process will say that I went to the company offices, mm -hmm. but yes, someone had his own office somewhere in the arcade and is taking girls. No, so now it has a paid Shaban, we but have now, Shaban, before you continue, we have had an undercover journalist here in New Vision. Mm -hmm. Who went to Saudi Arabia and unveiled these companies? Mm -hmm. They are about six. They are licensed. They take these girls, make them pay, and actually take them to Saudi Arabia. Okay, let me let me go on record. That is wrong, and it goes against the regulation that regulates our whole business. So, if there is any company mm. that has ever done who does that, they are, that is wrong. If, Female migrant workers are not supposed to pay anything. Let me let me bring in. But they pay. There is even a precondition. Mm. Let me bring in Vivian. Vivian, are we missing the point? Because I'm seeing two very serious issues. The government, there is a problem, which Abdullah is saying that there is a process, there is a, a challenge in the process, which and, and the gaps that must be fixed before you look at the skills. But the government is looking at skills. Which is not the problem. Which, is, which, which to Abdallah is not the point. Who is playing mind games on the other in this whole subject? Mind games indeed are being played. Because first of all, the UAE, in issuing this ban, was trying to curb some of these um, abuses, like I already explained to you, mm. and was addressing them to those governments that they were issuing bans to. And our government here is reacting by saying we don't want to export unskilled labor. Mm. Why? Because of the problems that we are talking about here, that we are discussing right here. And for me, I think, like I said, that is only part of the problem. Because yes, you may send a skilled worker there, but what conditions are they going to be subjected to? Number one, to get there. Because as we speak right now, we all know you cannot just wake up, go to a labor export company, and say, I want to be taken to a UAE to go and do work. Even those may work, uh, work opportunities we're talking about without paying money. They have ranges there too. Those that pay you, you have to pay two million, five million mm. for you to actually go. That is information as uh, media we have been putting out. Mm. We have brought you stories of uh, girls who had to pay. Then when they got there, they would visit visas, they started looking for uh, where to find the jobs they could not. And then sometimes the traffickers even find them in their jobs mm -hmm. there and talk them out of them to traffic them. Never again, there's this thing called a biyumba. Yeah. You know, they end up in those biyumbas and then they find themselves in circumstances or conditions that are even inhumane. So government should have come up with new guidelines on, on someone who wants to go there. And then we are going to have a vetting process this time around of getting a visa. Mm -hmm. I think for the UAE, I think that is going to be an interesting one because you've just been having your paperwork even for visiting. Mm -hmm. Then you get there and get a visa. This time it's going to be different. There's going to be an assessment of the nature of person who is actually getting there. Mm -hmm. I think government needs to concentrate on such things. The person who is going there, how are they going to be able to live there? Do you have money even on your account? Just in case something happens, would you be able to live? Would you be able to sustain yourself in that period which you're talking about? Even you're talking about, you're talking about males mm. who for, for, for sure have been gotten from Barara, from Masaka. They have not been to school. You expect them to pay 5.3 million shillings on somebody's account. When they cannot even raise that money, when <laughs> if it is required to buy a ticket. Now that's well, where their that's, 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 that's where their sale that that begins. Mm. Well, that's what. I, let me just finish my point. Those are the things I am saying. Government should address. And yes, saying that's that quite we, a deterrent move. Yes, saying mm. that we are exporting only skilled workers or skilled labor. Definitely, that is going to be part of the solution. Mm. That is the fact. Before I bring it's it up, Dana, the let, 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 let me actually, because we have to wind up this subject, but before we do that, Abdullah, rather, uh, Shaban, we have had uh, figures coming out from the Ministry of Finance. There's a lot of money by the remittances coming in from yes. uh, Ugandans working abroad, and Middle East is quite, uh, you know, 
contributing a lot, and many of the families here surviving on the money that these workers, the maids, actually send home. And we also understand that there is a lo an increasing unemployment in this country. Uh, is this new rule, Shaban, not a deterrent uh, to Ugandans who want to go and work in the Middle East, given the benefits that the country and Ugandans who survive on them wicked? First of all, we got to know about these proposals uh, in the media. Mm. We haven't had they are plans. They are plans. Mm. Because they are proposals, mm. they are not yet actualized. So we expect them to come, uh, I mean, to engage with those stakeholders mm. to see what uh, best solution we can have uh, for, for Uganda, especially those who want to go to UAE. Mm. Because now, this whole project uh, was a, reac was, was a, a reaction. reactionary move mm. after UAE. Uh, uh, rounding off Ugandans who have been staying there illegally. And mm. they were given amnesty of three yes. months, which mm. is ended this month. By the way, for the record, so you can the mm. no country can allow a foreigner to stay in their country illegally. Including Uganda. Including Uganda. Mm. So now, if this came up, and now government, because the other government of UAE introduced stringent Measure. and harsh rule, uh, measures eh, mm. to say that whoever wants to go there on a visit visa, must provide one, must provide uh, five million, mm. that is in Uganda shillings, mm. two, must have a return ticket, mm. three, must have an accommodation booked for the time he's going to spend the, the other side. Mm. If he has been invited by a family, the family must provide, uh, a, 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 let's say, evidence. So, uh, okay, must provide the financial proof that they cater for this person for the time of his or her stay, the other side. So now, on our side, we say that, yes, what UAE introduced was good. Reason being, many Ugandans have abused that window because it was easier for anyone to get a visit visa to Dubai. So whenever they went the other side, by the it was also easier for a person who is in Dubai to renew that visa to stay for another 30 days. Mm -hmm. So there are people who have stayed in Dubai, or UAE, for almost a year, but renewing that visit visa. That is visit visa. Mm. Yes. But, but what is the likely implication Monday. of 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 government requiring you to recruit only people with certificates and skills? So. Is it narrowing? Is it narrowing your uh, recruitment score? Is no, it is giving them a chance as mm. legalized people. Okay. <laughs> as mm. legalized people. Mm. Yes. Now it's mm. like this, to do eh? for more business. Uh, if they are legalized people to train mm, to to recruit formally to do safe labor. My uh, deployment, for instance, if I'm um, to interject a bit, because, sorry, because I'm looking at, I want I'm looking to. At, there mm. are people who have been approaching them without certificates of skills, mm. and then if you introduce this new rule, certainly mm. it's going to reduce all the numbers they get or they recruit. Oh, the numbers, yes, it mm. is true. Now, mm. in the regulation that they are saying, mm. yeah, there is a provision for trade test. Mm. And it must be done by the directorate of uh, industrial training. Mm. So I think they want to actualize that to say that whoever that is taken must have had at least a training and a, a certificate is issued mm. that this person can really do that particular job he or she wants to do, uh, wants to do the other side. Mm. So if it's brought up for us, it's okay with us because it will be part of the experience we are going to. Uh, to, 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 to produce, I mean, to give the other side that wants to employ this Ugandan. So it's okay with our side. But now the question is that who is going to bear the cost of training? Mm -hmm. that, That's is, one. that is number one. Who has been bearing the cost of training, the two weeks training? The two weeks training on made is, is borne by the, the employer, the mm -hmm. other side. But now we are looking at now Ugandans who are going for other job categories of which they have to incur mm -hmm. the cost of ex externalization. Mm -hmm. Right now, Ugandans have not been have not been paying mm. for training. Putting it, I mean, I mean, bearing it, bearing it in mind that when they get the other side, they are always trained. They are not just dumped on work. They are always trained by the companies that mm. that are going to, to, employ, to employ them. So now, in this case, the government is planning to actualize eh, the training session that if you want to go as a driver, you must train with us. Mm. Even producing a driving license that I have one, 
I, I went through a training, I was vetted and then issued with one, is not enough. Mm -hmm. You have to go through the directorate to be trained. So now the question is, who is going to bear this cost? Yes. The government mm -hmm. knows very well that these are an, an unemployed Ugandans mm -hmm. who wants to go abroad to see that they get something. But the government is also saying but the government you also need wants because the, because the DI that, that would be another discussion yes. with the minister and maybe the, the minister mm -hmm. Abdallah. Yes. You were saying that actually these guys are now given a blanket check. Mm. To organize themselves to, organize to, and themselves to and do more and clean and jobs. More yes, mm, what because you know? what government has to do, mm. only that we have a problem with our government uh, servants, those people in... in, in the, the bureaucracy. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm. They, 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 they have, they are weak at bargaining. They are cowards. I want to say it straight because these are our servants. They are weak. Once uh, UAE came to regulate itself and, you know, it is publicly doing it mm -hmm. and everyone is welcoming it, for them they are running, they are panicking, talking anything, instead mm -hmm. of going down to negotiate, to negotiate even they are acting over zealously, you see their reactions are just, you know, but I'm sorry to say they are shallow, they do not go they, deep to understand. With the uh, listen to me, if you how cannot avoid taking them there. You've got to revise yourself. They should. I want to advise government and the minister, uh, the minister of labor. Let them go read what the African Union guides them. Mm. We go Africa now. Let's go as an Africa. Mm. African because Union. Uh, yes. African yes, Union. They have just our African countries. Mm. Isn't that enough for you to go to uh, Addis Ababa and sort yourselves? African Union has already guided these countries, the democratic countries, that cannot avoid going to the autocratic zones. It is known, benchmarking on Philippine, Sri Lanka and others, that could not avoid taking their own there, the unskilled, who are more in Africa. They have guided them, let them go read what African Union guides them to do, how to handle this issue, than still continuing to fix it the way they are, you know. Now they are talking of skills, what? Mm -hmm. But African Union has told them, you go benchmark with the Philippine. The, how, uh, if you ask Mr. Karema, how many Philippine people were in the same deportation at, at, at Alawil? How did they manage it? And they have numbers. Because they negotiate. This is what Kayonde has been telling this government every day. Mm -hmm. Recognize the workers' administration. Then they will own the process. The likes of Mr. Karema will be quiet. Their work will stop here. They make sure they train you. They are not bothered of someone they did not rape. The responsibility of who tortured in Saudi Arabia does not go to Mr. Karema. We are tired of choosing these people. Are you the one who rapes the girls in Saudi Arabia after deploying them? Why do you want to bargain so much when I call you that a girl has been raped there? As if you know. You feel guilty a bit. Mm. Did you help this Arab man to torture this girl? If not, then go away, get out of our way. We are workers. Let us speak our rights. Let us speak our language as workers. Let us negotiate. But you want to negotiate. I mean, you have nothing. You're putting on the table. You're putting just bodies. We are putting bodies. You're putting bodies in Saudi Arabia, but mm. you want Saudi Arabia to negotiate with you when the bodies you put in there, they, don't, they are not skilled. You mean, I think what the government is trying to do... Are they not rendering they, any service? Yes, they, they, they might... No, we shouldn't be service. that lowered. No. You know, African countries should should Abdella, know. Because mm. if, of course, the negotiation must be there, but certainly Uganda or any other African country will not negotiate at an equal state. It can never be... You, you will have to negotiate from the weakest point because the people you're sending to these Middle East countries can't write, can't read. Are you not demanding so much can, from can, the government? Can the, the Arab countries do without us? If they can also, we have got no problem. But still they also keep on pesting these business people mm. to deploy our girls. So which means they need, they us. need us. We need them. 50% mm. of Saudi are foreigners who are fetched from different countries. So they keep need, they need our service. Yes. So the blame goes to the countries that are sending. They have failed to realize what they are, even they don't know. You know, sometimes now you see the rules 
that are coming in, in UAE, mm. uh, are like uh, they are guiding these ones here. As if Uganda cannot see to set its own. Because UAE will also hear, oh, in Uganda, they have now come up with such and such. They will see where they can reduce or mm. they can see, because they also need business. So we need better negotiators, not cowards. We have a lot in Saudi that can be negotiated, but who goes there to negotiate is the problem. Mm. They are actually selling us. Look at the salary of domestic workers. Mm. It is lower, but you find more times the minister comes out and she laments about girls who escape, who run out of houses. You ask, why are they running? They are looking for better pay. Yes. Who pays better? Mm. attracts them to leave the way you can find her to go to this person. So I think the whole thing is not about the skilling, it's not about uh, whatever, but government is high time either to, uh, to embrace the unilateral arrangements of you know, bringing workers together uh, if they are to observe these workers' uh, uh, workers' rights in these zones that are autocratic, that will not give them these freedoms. Mm -hmm. Secondly, government has got to accept that they are they married a nighty dancer or a cannibal. Mm -hmm. Already we know torture is filled in the Arab countries. They know, they know themselves by the fact that they do not give the freedoms or they are not ratifiers onto the freedoms of association. Just like some maids are harassed here. No, listen to me, they are harassed here, but they can be brought to book. If they are harassed in the, Saudi the, Arabia, the you issue, cannot. The, the, issue, the issue, I think, is whether they are brought to book. And secondly, mm. when, once they are harassed here, mm. they have a freedom to speak out. But in Saudi, no. And they can easily cover up even the evidence. Mm. Saudi Arabia is not a signal to the international labor standards. These are things you are skipping. If you go and look at them, Uganda is a signatory. Mm. It is barred from going to Saudi Arabia. But once it cannot avoid going there, mm. and they have a window of a bairato, the negotiators of the bairato must be that patriotic, yes. not business-oriented about, to, uh, yes, about, to about the remittances only, mm. but also mind about the welfare, you know, the rights and welfare of those they are deploying, because they know they are deploying them where they will not be free to talk. On that same well, note, on that, on that note. Just a short, eh? mm. I have not taken long. Sitting down and listening to these two gentlemen, mm -hmm. the migrant voice, uh, voices that yes. are activists. Migrant workers' voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that who are, activi who are activists, uh, an activists. organization mm -hmm. that talk for the, migra the, the workers who are going there. And then the companies that are exporting the labor. I want to talk to all Ugandans, of course, knowing the government positions, mm -hmm. because I work with the media. Ugandans who want to go and find jobs there. If you cannot find something that is um, humane or skilled that mm. uh, is going to be able to help you live a li have a living, not just in terms of how much money you're getting, but you do you, will you remain with the life? Please stay around. Just stay around while these two get themselves sorted with government being their mediator, because you're going to go there and the stories are real, mm. and that is the truth. But so, also but also, you have also to remind them that there is no place where they are all roses. Certainly that is true, but you know what is this? very interesting? Mm. Mubra, I don't know if you have had a maid, but you will have a maid here who you certainly pay, I want to say, good money, because you take care of their mm. other needs other than the, 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 the payment mm. you take care of their medical bills, you feed them, and then she'll tell you, I am going to the UAE. And unfortunately, we are running out of Let's time, and actually and we have to job. wrap up this whole conversation. We've been discussing the plight of migrant workers, but also the new rules that set out by government to start exporting only skilled labor to the Middle East countries. With me has been Abdallah Kayonde, the Executive Director of Migrant Workers Voice Network, uh, Shaban Kalema, Director KHM, and Vivian Kamsini, our, our fellow journalist here. Thank you so much, gentlemen and lady, for joining me this morning. We are going to take a short break. Before we do that, Sheikh Mafu Mafu is coming up with Miles Granite. Stay. <laughs>